All right, to start today, you're going to write each percent as a fraction. Go ahead and pause the video and do this quick warm-up. So 33%, remember, is 33 out of 100. That can't be reduced. 75% is going to be 75 out of 100. But that would reduce to 3 fourths. 20% is going to be 20 out of 100, which is going to reduce to 2 fifths. Oh, 1 fifth. Sorry. And then 60%. It's going to be 60 out of 100, which is 3 fifths. So today we're learning how to estimate when we are using percents. When we're estimating with percents, it is important to understand that we can uh, use what are called compatible numbers. So these are numbers that go well together because they have common factors. Okay, so for example, 13 over 24, not very compatible because 13 is prime, but 12 over 24 would be because they would share a common factor of 12. When we're estimating with percents, it helps to know some benchmarks, and the benchmarks are common numbers that serve as points of reference. Some common benchmarks for percents are shown in the table. So for example, 1 20th is really the same as 0 0.05 or 5%. 10% is 0.1 or 1 tenth. 25% is going to be 0.25. And I would suggest getting these down just as points of reference to have. Okay, 50% is a half. Um, Two-thirds or 66.6% .6 is 6 repeating. And 1 is really just 100%. I find the fractions are easiest to use when we're doing this. So here, I'm going to take 21% of 66. Well, 21% is not a really good compatible number to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that 21% to 20%. And I know that 20% is the same as 20 out of 100 or 1 fifth. The reason I'm going to use 1 fifth is because now I'm finding 1 fifth of 66. Now, 66 is not divisible by 5, but 65 is. So if I do 1 fifth of 65, it's really just 65 divided by 5, which is going to give me an answer of 13. So 21% of 66 is going to be approximately 13. Let's look at another example. So 36%, once again, not super easy to work with. So I'm going to round it to something easier to work with. I'm going to choose 40. 40% 40 is the same as 40 out of 100, or 2 fifths. So now I'm finding 2 fifths of 120. Now 120 is divisible by 5, and it's 24. But because so one fifth of one twenty would be twenty four. But since I am finding two fifths, I have to take that and I'm going to take the twenty four and multiply it by two to get forty eight. So thirty six of percent of one twenty is about forty eight. All right, so now it's your turn. Why don't you pause the video and try this one for yourself? All right, so 29%, I would recommend rounding to 30. So 30% is the same as 3 tenths. That cannot be reduced, so we're just going to use that. 86, however, is not very easily divisible by 10, so I'm going to round it to something close it is, which is 90. So now we're taking 3 tenths of 90. So here... First, I'm going to find one-tenth of 90, which is going to be 9. But then, since we have three parts, I'm going to multiply it by 3, and I get 27. So here, our answer would be around 27. All right, here's another one for you to try on your own. So 44%, I'm just going to go ahead and round to 40% again. 
which as we know is two-fifths. Since it's two-fifths of one-thirty, I'm going to first find that one-fifth of one-thirty. which is 26, but since we have 2, so I'm going to take the 26 times 2, which is going to give me 52. So 44% of 130 is about 52. Now let's look at an example of when we would use estimating of percents in real life. Maria took her mother out to lunch for her birthday. The total cost of their food, drinks, and dessert was $20.15, which is pretty cheap if you think about it. Uh, if the sales tax was 7% and Maria wants to leave a 15% tip, about how much money should she pay? So we're going to start by looking at our percentages. We have 15 and 7, so if we would take 15 plus 7, that's going to give us 22%, but we don't want to work with 22%, so here I'm just going to change this to 20%. I could also change it to 25%. Um, depending on how you want to look at it. So either one of those would be okay. Now, $20.15, not super easy to work with, so instead of using $20.15, I'm just going to call my bill 20 bucks. Now, 20% would be the same as one-fifth, 25% is going to be one-fourth. Either way, so one fifth of twenty is going to be four, one fourth of twenty would be five. So either way here, you would choose one of those numbers, add it back to the twenty dollars. So you're gonna pay somewhere between twenty-four to twenty-five dollars is how much she should leave. So why don't you pause the video and try this one out for yourself? All right, Fred and Claudia went out to lunch, their total for their order was $24.85. If the sales tax was 8.5% and, and they want to leave a 16% tip, about how much money should they pay? So once again, if we add the percentages, we have 16 plus 8.5. We're just going to call that 25% this time, which we know is 1 fourth. So we're finding 1 fourth of the total, which was 24.85, but we're going to call, we're going to say that it's 24. I don't want to round it to 25 because that is not a compatible number with my 1 fourth. So here 1 fourth of 24 is going to be six dollars. So if I take my, even here if I rounded it to 25, add my six dollars, you're going to end up paying around 31 dollars.